Hey guys, I know many of you are already sick of this, but we have yet another GPU release, and this one is from AMD. It is the RX 6600, the cut down version of the RX 6600 XD that came out just a short while ago. AMD claims that this card is 10 to 20% slower than its big brother and is still able to deliver around 100 FPS in AAA titles at 1080p, while losing 20% performance may shy some people away. I believe that this will completely sell out for a completely different reason. Keep watching and I'll explain why. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. First, let's compare these two cards, starting with the similarities. Both these cards have the same chip, codenamed Navi23. They both have the same die size, same 8 lane PCIe Gen 4 interface, same 32 megabytes of Infinity cache, and 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on 128 bit interface. But that's where similarities end. XT variant has its memory running at 16 gigabits per second, while the non XT is running at 14, which results in memory bandwidth drop by approximately 14%. The other major difference is the amount of compute units and ray accelerators. We go from 32 to 28 and lose about 256 stream processors. On top of all of this, the GPU game and boost clocks have gone down as well, which in the end also reflects on the total board power going down from 160 watts to 132 watts. That is 21% reduction in power consumption. This is one of the things I'd like to focus on more as I think this may be the main selling point of this card. First, let's check out some gaming benchmarks for which we'll be using our mix of cards from both AMD and Nvidia with the latest edition of RX 6600. This particular card is made by XFX and is the Swift 210. It is clear that RX 6600 is just a cut down version, so much so that XFX has even used the same box from the XT model and put a sticker over it. If you look really closely, it shows XT on it. It is funny, but makes no real world difference. The card itself has dual slot, dual fan design. It features a single HDMI 2.1 port and three display ports. This is more of a budget card setup, so we'll have to see how does it do in thermals and acoustics a bit later on in the video. The tests were carried out on a Ryzen 9 5950X bench without overclocking the CPU or the GPU, simply enabling the OCP profile for the RAM, while keeping the rest of the component settings as they were out of the box. In the shadow of a Tomb Raider at 1080p, we immediately see that the new card is about 15% slower than the XD variant and about 18% behind 3060. It beats out 2060 by a small margin. In 1440p, it is a bit the same, but it still has playable frame rates. In Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p, it is clear that we are bottlenecked elsewhere on the system. Everything considered, it is still very good frame rate for this game. At 1440p, it drops about 11% behind XT version and is just 5% faster than 2060. Another very demanding game is Total War 3 Kingdoms. Here at 1080p, 6600 is actually losing to 2060 by about 10% on average FPS, but is 21% faster on the 1 percentiles. Very similar stories happening at 1440p too, but this is no longer playable frame rate on any of these cards apart from 6700 XT. Next up, a game that will likely even run on a well-optimized potato, Doom Eternal. Here at 1080p, we see again 6600 is performing below 2060 on both average FPS and 1 percentiles. Turning up the resolution to 1440p helps the 6600, and now it leads over 2060, but it is last generation card from Nvidia, so performance here is not the greatest. Moving on to the few games with ray tracing, and first game is Godfall. This game is certainly well optimized for AMD and it shows as performance seems to be on par with the ASUS variant of the 6600 XD and just 10% behind the XFX own XD version. I can say one thing though, while benchmarking this, there was clear stuttering at times and it really shows on the 1 percentiles. The second ray trace game is Rift Breaker. At 1080p, this one has a very small spread between most of the cards. Same can be said for the 1440p. If you intend to play this game, then either one of these cards will do the trick. Based on all of these results, it seems that if you're on a tight budget and you want to get something for 1080p gaming, then pick up Nvidia 2060 and call it a day, right? If you purely look at performance, it is clear that RX 6600 and RTX 2060 keep trading blows, and depending on the price, it may actually make more sense to go for second-hand 2060, but there is more to this. 
I already mentioned that this card, just like 6600 XT, runs on 8 PCIe Gen 4 lanes. What this allows you to do is purchase motherboard that has multiple PCIe expansion slots and install graphics card as well as multiple NVMe drives and some sort of expansion card like capture card to talk directly to the CPU without sharing the bandwidth with the other components via the onboard chipset. This card also is very power efficient. Let me show you a few examples of this, starting with Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p. In this game, if you remember, there was a bottleneck on the system and all the cards were delivering basically the same result. When we delve deeper, we can check FPS per 10 watts, and here 6600 is leading with 10.7 FPS, which is 22% better than XT counterparts and 38% better than 3060. If we up the resolution to 1440p, the difference drops, but is still 10% better than XT and 27% better than 3060, which is still very impressive. Another example is Shadow of a Tomb Raider. Here at 1080p, we find 6600 is about 16% better than XT version and 29% better than 3060. If we look at the SAD 2060 that is competing with in terms of FPS, then the difference is 43%. When we raise the resolution up to 1440p, the ratio stays very similar. The power efficiency lead does not translate in all games. For example, in Doom Eternal, at 1080p, while 6600 is still at the top, it is matched with all other AMD cards and leads over 3060 only by 16%. What is interesting, in this example, RTX 2060 had higher frame rate, but is 36% less efficient. So what does all of this mean? First off, it is really important to have a clear idea what performance level in games do you want to achieve. If you intend to play at 1080p, then most of the recent cards will do well enough. And if you start looking at things like DLSS and FSR, you can stretch the performance quite a bit more. Then there are clear benefits of having a much more power efficient card. Starting with the most obvious, you'll need to use less power, which is cheaper. And you can also get away with lower capacity power supply. If you play games on your PC just an hour a day, then the amount of power you save may be only a few dollars a year. But on the flip side, this is where we have an issue for card availability. Super energy efficient cards will be in high demand for crypto miners. If you're able to save even 20% of the electricity bill, when looking at 24 hour operation with potentially hundreds of cards, this could be the difference between making a profit or losing money. The other benefit of having power efficient card is the need of less cooling, which should translate into cheaper GPU and quieter operation. To test this theory, we ran Time Spy on loop to stress test this card and see how it performs. We ran it for 10 loops and found it delivered an average of 53 FPS and topped out at 67 degrees Celsius. During this test, we also checked the acoustics and at 50 centimeter distance, it hits 34.3 dBA, which is really quiet. As a comparison, Asus 6600 XT on average hit 61 FPS and topped out at 61 degrees Celsius. The notable difference here is acoustics. Asus was louder at 40 dBA. But to be fair, both these cards are certainly within reasonable range. To sum all of this up, should you buy this GPU? It comes down to the price and availability. Since all of these cards are using smaller Navi 23 chips, with some luck, we'll see more of them available in the market. But from everything I've seen so far, the idea of budget cards costing between three and $400 is gone, and the manufacturers know that. So expect pricing to be somewhere in between the retail price and scalper price. That's if miners don't take all of them in one big swoop. I would recommend keeping an eye on the second-hand market for large-gen cards, as you may have some good opportunities there. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.